Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. This is our match preview for Aston Villa versus Zerinsky Mostar in the Europa Conference League. And I am absolutely chomping at the bit to get down B6 Villa Park under the lights. European Knights are back amongst us Villa fans and I'm excited. I'm really excited. Um, I think we go into it now in great form with a great buzz about the place again. Um, not saying that there wasn't already because we're having a really good season, but I think when you can go into any other competition on the back of a bit of a buzz and a bit of euphoria after the weekend, then it just makes things a lot better, doesn't it? So really looking forward to it personally. I'm excited to walk up to the ground to see Villa Park and just think that we're going to be watching our side in Europe. So it, it feels a bit more real that it's going to be at Villa Park as well and seeing a bit of the branding and, you know, the anthem blaring out at the start. So, yeah, it's, it's proper exciting and, and something to it embrace as well. So uh, we're going to go into some great detail on Zerinsky Mostar. It's very difficult to find great detail on Mostar, but we have. We have delivered on this podcast with some great data. Uh, thank you to our good friend, AVFC Scout on Twitter for letting us use his data. So that's great of him and, and go and check it out, etc. But one thing irked me yesterday and it really got on my nerves. So basically, I was listening to talk sport and normally there's this good feature um, about midday time where they review the games of the weekend and they talk about the games and generally it's quite good. But we got to Aston Villa v Brighton and I thought, right, this is going to be great because We've just been a great, you know, a good team and they're firing and the media love them and et cetera, et cetera. They welcomed John Cross on, their expert journalist guest to come on. And they started talking about the performance and they spoke about the first half and he had to go in his car. I couldn't watch the second half and he was listening on the radio and he mentioned Sam Matterface and Stuart Pearce's comments saying that if you take away two of Villa's goals for a bit of controversy, then the game could have gone the other way. <laughs> what are they on about? The game could have gone the other way, apparently. <laughs> Ridiculous. But then we go on to another pundit stepping in and mentioning, but Brighton have just played Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday. It's going to take some time for them to adjust to that schedule, making excuses for Brighton. But haven't Villa just played Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday with heavily congested fixtures? with squad rotation and absolutely demolish somebody who has gone through that very same schedule that we have gone through. And it just really annoyed me that the media still cannot see what's happening at Aston Villa. They cannot praise Aston Villa. It's really starting to get on my nerves. And I know some fans will like us to go under the radar. But at this point, we've blew up the radar. The radar is in overdrive. It's just absolutely mind-boggling that the sense of the media cannot simply understand how good of a job Unai Emery is doing, how well we are coached as a team, how well our points tally are, how good we are as a side, what great players we've got. And then one final thing that really does my head in is you will see plastered over social media and everywhere, the minute anybody praises Aston Villa, 
the first thing that they say is Unai Emery's time at Arsenal was tainted by this. His accent got in the way. It's this, it's that. Why do people have to mention that? Why do they have to mention? It's so frustrating when I'm hearing like, but Unai Emery at this, Unai Emery at that. No, forget that now. Look at the job he's doing at Aston Villa and how well he's doing at Aston Villa. And it just frustrates the life out of me that 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 narrative, they have to get that narrative in first of last time, this is what he did. Before we can even get on to praising how well Aston Villa are doing, it's literally just ridiculous. And it's embarrassing. It's really, really embarrassing. And that's why whenever I get the opportunity to go on TNT Sport or the overlap or anything that I get to go on. You, the first thing I do is I praise this club to the rafters because nobody else does. And that is what I will do every single time. I will show my football knowledge first and then I will showcase what Aston Villa are all about and praise everything for that small snippet of space that I'll get on, whatever opportunity, that is what I'll do. Because these people ain't got a clue what's going on. And it's embarrassing. It's really, really embarrassing. And yeah, it's just a shit show from them. So I've had a bit of a rant about that, but it really annoyed me. And I think it's time that the football world kind of wake up and have a little look and educate themselves on how we play, what we do, and how well we are doing things, because it's starting to get to a very embarrassing state for me. When everyone starts talking about Villa, I'm just like, what are you on about? So, yeah, bit of a rant, but it's really annoyed me, and I know it annoys a lot of you out there as well, so I'll, I'll show you how annoyed I am. And I imagine you guys are just infuriated by the whole thing at the same time. Match of the day, we're on third. We've just smashed someone 6-1. One of the best performances of the weekend. Mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Right, so let's get into Aston Villa versus Zerinsky Mostar. So, like I said at the top end of the episode, thank you to AVFC Scout. I'll put his link to his Twitter feed in the comment in the uh, description down below. So, click it and follow him because you know this work that he's done here is absolutely fantastic. Because Zrinski Mostar, you know, they are sort of an obscure team. Like their sta their stadium's got like one main stand, and the rest is just out in the open. I imagine it's really nice and it's great there but you know I don't watch much of this type of football from you know Bosnia and Herzegovina league etc so um yeah it's very obscure so the fact that we've got this we can showcase what they all what they are all about as well so their home record so far this season they've got three wins and one loss the away record two wins and a loss they currently sit fourth in the league on 15 points. They are uh, three points off top spot. Their European form looks a bit sketchy. Uh, they have two wins, one draw, two losses. Their away record is one home win, one draw and two losses. They've scored 17 goals uh, and they've conceded 15. You can see here that their formation, they generally play a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. Jurinski appeared to be a fairly conventional side. Uh, Bill Bija is Zurinsky's top scorer and stands out as their primary threat, a typical fox-in-the-box striker. The team's primary attacking focus is supplying the main man, Bibija, with wingers and overlapping fullbacks looking to provide service for him. Uh, Merich, the goalkeeper, appears to be a potential weak link. He doesn't seem very commanding off his line and leaks goals. So uh, their key, key players are Bibilja, uh, Kuze and Kiss. So we've got a little bit of a thread here about their best players as well. So their players to 
watch out for. Bill Beja, uh, Juinki Mo stars captain and talisman, five foot eleven, left footed, thirty two year old striker. He's got ten appearances this season, contributing to nine goals and one assist across all competitions. Notably, last season he scored thirty one goals in forty two appearances in all competitions. So he's an absolute baller in the league. Um, and for Zerinsky Mostar, he's a poacher with a keen ability uh, to get on the end of crosses and using quick reactions to capitalise on rebounds. D despite not being the tallest, he possesses good heading accuracy and can win and convert headers. Uh, if we have a look at some of his stats so far this season, then so he scored six goals this season in the league. He has a conversion rate of 26%. He's played seven games, started six, averaging 79 minutes per game. He's got one assist so far this season. And his passing accuracy is quite low on 69%. Uh, if we have a look at Kuze Winger, 24-year-old, uh, uh, right-footed Croatian winger. Uh, this season, he's got two assists in nine appearances. Last season, he was their standout performer with 11 goals and 10 assists in all competitions. We have got some of his stats so far from this season. He's played four games, started four. He's got one goal. He has got two assists, passing accuracy of 74%. And he's also got accuracy of long balls, 50%. He's got 2.8 interceptions per game, 1.8 ball recoveries per game. His successful dribbles are 81%, which is quite high as well. So fair play to him. And Korluka is their right back this season. He's made 10 appearances, leading the team in minutes played and has provided two assists. Last season, he contributed to two goals and 10 assists in 39 appearances across all competitions. He'll take long throw-ins. He's got decent ball carrying abilities, capable of advancing on the ball. And he isn't hesitant to use sliding tackles. Korluka scored an absolute banger against AZ Alkmaar in the first game. Uh, an absolute beauty of a finish. Uh, so we've got to watch out for his shots from distance as well. Uh, we've also got some bits on their playing style as well from uh, AVFC scouts. So attacking setup in an even game, Jurinski attack with four to five players. This includes a striker, two wingers and a, and a number 10 forming a diamond shape. Uh, in an even state, Zerinsky typically uh, attack with four to five players. So you can see that here, that this is their shape in that little bit of a diamond shape through there as well. So that's their attacking setup. We can have a look at their defending, uh, also more attacking setup here. The fullback on the ball side will occasionally overlap, looking to play crosses and cutbacks into the box. The two central midfielders assume a holding role, maintaining and recycling possession. When Zhirinsky are uh, trailing or in need of a goal, their central midfielders start to push higher up the pitch. Number 20, Ivancic, is the more attacking-minded of the two. Uh, so we've also got here more of the attacking setup. In crossing situations, Zerinsky don't tend to overload the box with too many players. The primary target is number 99, the striker. Uh, the far side winger provides an option at the back post. They also scored from the back post against Alkmaar. Um, so like what Scout's saying, they don't overload. It's, it's similar to just sort of like they'll just be up against their opposition player at the back post. So we've really got to be aware of the runners from the back post. We know at times this season we have had a little bit of a problem with that. So we need to be switched on with that. Uh, the far side winger provides an option at the back post. Kiss, um, uh, number 10, prefers to make late runs at the edge of the box, looking for cutbacks and shots. Having Bubakar Kamara in a screening role in front of the back four should effectively neutralise the threat posed on the edge of the box. I'm absolutely loving this from AVFC scouts. <laughs> absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, Zhirinsky in their defensive setup use a back four with two midfielders positioned in front of them. They tend to set up in a mid-block defensively, but can be caught flat-footed, leaving space for runs behind. Compounding this, their goalkeeper appears hesitant coming off his line. Against Villa away from home, I wouldn't be surprised if they opt for a low block. Me too. 
I expect a low block too. Uh, their weak link is the goalkeeper. Uh, he was back up last season, but he's now the number one after, after the previous goalkeeper exited. He seems uncomfortable coming off his line from crosses and through balls, conceding 13 goals in nine games. So, absolutely fantastic stuff there from AVFC Scout. What a legend. Um, you know, I thought that was absolutely remarkable, really, from, you know, a team that's quite obscure to me so that's fantastic stuff so more on the game then i would imagine this is going to be a comfortable villa win um i would imagine so they're going to sit in that block they're going to look to defend and i think they're going to want to just sort of suck it up and and just see what can happen really so it's important for us to move the ball quickly and I think I think the crowd will have the players up for this, you know. I think it's going to be loud. I think it's going to be raucous at the start. You know, it's it's our Villa inner Europe is going to come out of us. And I think we will sort of bring the atmosphere. And I think it's going to be really, really good. Early team news for me. I'd like rotation. I would like rotation. Uh, we will do predicted lineup tomorrow, so we'll go more in depth there. We should be winning this game quite comfortably with whatever opposition we put out on that pitch. We have to look at things in perspective of where we are. The Premier League is a massive, massive priority now. Where we are now, currently sitting where we are in the league with the opposition coming up on Sunday, who we have a torrid record against at, at the Molyneux at the minute. We are so bad at the Molyneux. You know, our results are just, just, we just can't get anything there. Can we? So uh, we've, I want to see a big Villa win at, at, at Wolves. Um, if I'm being honest, I want to see us getting that win there. Um, so, I think certain players need taking out the team, if I'm being honest, and the balance has got to be there. Uh, certain players coming to this team on Thursday have got to step up and and you know and put in a big performance because again, yes, this is important. We we want to we want to go far in this cup. The beauty of a group stage is that you can manage it, and what I mean by manage it is I think Unai can assess what we do, the scenarios in each game, where we are and where we are in the league, etc. And I think that's the task of Unai in this group stage, is, is managing the group and getting the points to get out the group. And, yeah, I mean, we should be winning this game quite comfortably and then go full strength on Sunday against Wolves because that's, that's a huge game. So, um, Got confirmed opposition pre op, opposition preview guests coming on from Wolves side of things. So we've got a massive Wolves channel coming on. So that's now all confirmed. So looking forward to recording with them. Looking forward to this game. And yeah, I can't, just can't wait to be back in Europe. I mean, I watched Emery Cam the other day. And that was absolutely fantastic. Loved it. Uh, watched the goals numerous times. We're in a good place now, so we're just really looking forward to the game. Hopefully, you've all enjoyed this episode. I mean, you've got to have learned something from it because to get IV Scouts, you know, data on here is fantastic on how they play. So uh, I'd love you to drop your thoughts on this game. Um, I'd love you to drop a like on this episode. Um, let's have a decent like target then. Let's go 800 on this episode. Uh, and then just comment your thoughts like you normally do. And cheers for all of the support. We'll be back tomorrow with a predicted lineup. So, up the villa. <laughs>